This video is going to cover the topic of percents. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for today is how is a percent like a ratio? Hopefully we have all had experience with percents. We hear percents all the time, whether we connect it to math or not. We hear 1% milk. We earn 85% on a test. Or we hear that 52% of the people voted for a particular candidate. But when you think about percents, do you realize that percents are really just a type of ratio? Percent, of course, is a term that means per cent. We've used the term per a lot lately because we've been talking about unit rate. And we know that per means for each. Cent is a prefix that means 100, like century or cents. Percent, therefore, means for 100. When we see that someone gets an 85% on a test, it means that for every 100 questions, they got 85 of them right. When we hear 52% of the people voted for a candidate, it means that in a group of 100 people, 52 of them voted for him or her him or her, whoever that may be. A percent is a ratio. It's a part to whole ratio. It is telling us how much is represented out of a whole. Sometimes that number is really 100, but oftentimes it's not. It's a good time to remember right now that ratios can be written in equivalent forms. When we're talking about percent as a ratio, it's just an equivalent ratio that's out of 100. Let's look at an example. We'll make this one a little bit friendly to start. If we look at this image, we can see that there are four X's that are red, right? We can also see that there are 10 X's total. I can write that as a ratio of four out of 10, right? Four to 10. If I want to describe that as a percent, I can, right? What percent of these x's are red? Well, I could set up an equivalent ratio, and knowing that it needs to be a percent, I want my total to no longer be 10, but think hypothetically what it would be out of 100. Because we have to keep these equivalent, I can think to myself, well, 10 times 10 made 100, so 4 times 10 is 40. 40 out of 100 of these x's would be red. So I can say that this is 40% red. So like I said, that's a pretty friendly example, right? I'm sure some of us just looked at it and knew right away that 4 out of 10 was 40%. So let's take a look at another. So here we see that a student got 14 out of 20 questions right on a quiz. How would we turn this into a percent? Well, I'm going to set up a proportion to figure this out, right? Because percent is just the equivalent ratio of the information we already have. So I know that it was 14 out of 20 questions correct. And I'm trying to imagine what that would be out of 100. So I'm going to put that also on the bottom as the total number. Instead of the total number being 20, I'm thinking about what it would have been out of 100. And I know that 20 times 5 is 100. So I'll do the same thing to the top, right? I need to multiply 14 by 5 to keep my ratio equivalent. And that's going to be 70. Right? So the student, therefore, earned a 70% on his or her test. Maybe next time they need to study a little bit more. Let's take a look at one more example. And this time we'll make it so it's maybe not as friendly, so that we have to think a little bit more about it. So this time I can see that there are 16 students out of 40 who are playing on a soccer team. And again, I want to just think about what this would be as a percent. So again, we're going to set up our proportion to figure out the equivalent value in the ratio if it were out of 100. So I've set up my equivalent ratio, and I'm trying to figure out how much it would be right, out of 100. This time, though, I don't really know, maybe necessarily off the top of my head, how many times 40 goes into 100? So I might need to do a little side calculation over here. So I actually just decided to divide 100 by 40, and I found out that it was 2 and a half, 
Um, so that tells me that if I multiply 40 by 2 and a half, I'll get 100. And of course, that means I have to do the same thing here. Right? Our ratio is not always going to be scaled up with a whole number. Sometimes it's with halves or even with many messier numbers. Um, but if I multiply 16 by 2 and a half, I'll find out that the answer is 40. So that means that 40% of the students play on a soccer team. The important thing to think about in each of these examples is that um, in this relationship, our equivalent ratios will always be set up the same way. We always set it up in this way where we have one side of the equivalent ratio as part to whole, right, the part out of the whole group, and the other half has the percent, and it's always out of 100, right, because the percent is always out of 100. And the great part about this setup is that we can use this in a lot of different ways. So in the next videos, in the next work that we do, sometimes we will know three, well, we'll always know three out of four parts of this ratio, but sometimes we'll know these three parts. Sometimes we'll know the part, the percent, and the 100, but we'll be finding the whole. We're gonna examine what this means in coming work, right? But this is the basic setup that we need to keep in mind. So remember the essential question of this video was how is a percent like a ratio? Hopefully you've seen that a percent is really just a ratio where it's out of 100.